Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in the Thousand Week Reich, in which we are playing as a certain familiar nation, the United States of America, in which we shall be led by Harry Truman. Now, like normal campaigns, I show you the custom game rules, and there's not any. Everything's going to be on default. I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to set it at random. But let us begin with the U.S. of A. Of course, like I said, led by here Truman. The mods I'm using are TWR, Thousand Week Reich, uh, Player Let Peace Conferences, Colored Buns, Colored Events, and the State Transfer Tool Mod. Only five, but we have the U.S. in 1952. The U.S., as it sees itself, is a shining example of democracy and freedom in the world. Having triumphed over the Japanese Empire in the Pacific War and standing as a bulwark against the Germans and their sphere of oppression. The short war of 1939 and 1940 in Western Europe quickly ended the between the United Kingdom and Germany, while America, sticking to neutrality in the conflict, kept a strong gaze on the Japanese Empire. In December 41, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor in an attempt to wipe out the U.S. Pacific Fleet and allow their forces to seize the European colonies in Eastern Asia to gain vital resources for, uh, for their draining war in China. America, of course, spent years of bloody fighting against the Japanese guerrilla defenders, bonsai charges, and kamikaze attacks building up to Operation Olympic and the siege of the Japanese homeland. Japan surrendered after the most costly fighting American troops had ever faced in the entire nation's history, and her GI to turn home, return home as exhausted heroes. The Pacific War, despite its human cost, turned our nation into a military and economic powerhouse. We stand as the strongest capitalist and democratic nation, the greatest free trading hub globally, and the largest economy on Earth. However, elsewhere, times have grown dark as Germany continues to oppress large swaths of Europe under the brutal jackboot of uh, racial oppression. While uh, Britain falls from its superpower status, we rise and take the mantle of the guardian of democracy. Can America sit content with German opposition, or is it time that we show the Germans that there can only be one eagle? God bless America. Now let us do our first focus, in which we are locked to either the United States Armed Forces, or we're going to do or finish the hydrogen bomb, which we're going to do first because what is America without bombs? The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki brought us in the world into the atomic age. With one, our one-of-a-kind nuclear supply, we are strongly the best and strongest military power on Earth, but there is room to grow. We must go ahead and finish the development of the even more powerful hydrogen bomb. Yes, we shall go kaboom as best as we can. We start off with five research slots. Amazing, which we're going to spend all on industry and engineering. So, post-war pr line production, thank you very much. We're going to grab some countrywide improvements as well for more repair speed, which we'll need eventually. Definitely get some construction one, which is Definitely needed what we need. And uh, military factory construction speed? Sure, why not? I want to go with synthetic resources next, but we need to spend some time doing this. Mechanized computing so we get slightly more research time, or, you know, faster research speed, I should really say, and it happens within a month. Now, we have a couple divisions. I'm going to try to leave as many divisions as I can here in Japan. I really don't want to move these guys. I think it's best to just keep them there. I think that'd be okay. And 26 combat width? That's a bit weird. But I'm going to throw the one over here in Okinawa. That is a... That is, is that, is Okinawa really that big? That seems awfully large. I don't think it was that big of an island, but I could be wrong. Let's uh, see, so we got some civilian factories over here. Let's go ahead and build up where we have a lot of infrastructure. Oh, Ohio. I guess we'll do you first. Wisconsin, Minnesota, Indiana, Missouri, Iowa. Build up a lot of infrastructure. I meant civilian factories. I misspoke. Ooh, Washington, we'll save that for Dambo Dockyards. And the rest of these divisions, throw them all under one boot. Uh, let's see, you got 45, split you guys in half, there you go, thank you, take all of you guys, come over here, thank you, we got almost two full armies worth of infantry, which will begin very soon, they shall be led by Omar Bradley, maybe, I don't know, Eisenhower is politically connected, I don't like that, so we will go with Bradley for now, let's go ahead and do this, so, like in TWR, Thousand Week Reich, we're going to need some anti-tanks, some guns, some support equipment, some motorized, which we'll get rid of eventually. I don't like mechanized, we're not going to get that. I like APCs, I really love APCs, because some post-war artillery. Don't do anti- uh, towed artillery, the other version of artillery. Anti-air, we'll keep on for here, but we're not actually going to make it. Uh, all this stuff, I don't like any of these, except tanks. I am weird, I just like tanks. Uh, fighters, wartime CVs, those are fine for now. Uh, we'll probably use a little bit of cast. We'll get some... Uh, uh, do we have... This mod is unique, in which I don't do we have naval bombers? We might not have naval bombers, actually. Let's see, strat bombers, we don't need wartime strat bombers, we don't need pre-war strat bombers, those are garbage. Wartime uh, transports, probably don't need those, we'll get some tack support as well. So we got tack, we got some of that. Interceptors, I don't use interceptors either, it just makes it easier for me to see if we don't use that stuff. So we got one, two, three, four, so we got the carriers taken care of, and then tack. And you know what, we'll get thrown one of these. And one, two, three, four, that, bop, bop, bop. And we got some experimental helicopters, which we're not gonna make any anyways. Uh, it'd probably be good to make sure we got enough fighters first. You can leave it on one. Carrier stuff is... Oh, uh, actually, 
That takes quite a bit of time. We're going to actually do that, just because it does take quite a bit of time to make carrier, jet fighters, and jet close air support. Uh, I'll make some of that. I don't mind doing a little bit of that, just so we have an extra little bit of range if we need range for close air support bombings or port strikes or something like that. Tanks, I love tanks. APCs go all the way. I want more artillery. We'll get some guns, of course. We'll get some more anti-tank. We'll build up ourselves more and more as time goes on. Let's talk about the Navy now. Uh, and ooh, I want to say we just let time go on, but I don't want to waste time. You know what? We can let time go on just slowly. And slowly like that, as I will modify the Navy. So actually, I, I really like the devs, what they did here. We have a tutorial, which I already know about. We have a GDP mechanic. Just talks about the industrial capacity of the world. Thank you very much. The UN mechanic. We are actually the we should be the leader of the UN, um, which I'll show you in just a little bit as well. So we're ready to play. Actually, this carrier is great. It's phenomenal. It's you can't get better than this carrier in our current standing. So I love that. Thank you, thank you, devs, for making a great carrier for us. Uh, thank you very much. Do that for now. I love carriers. I'm just going to deploy you in Norfolk because I love Norfolk. Never been. Maybe we'll go some days. Well, uh, carrier. That's out. This stuff is just outdated. There's no point to even upgrade stuff because it takes so long to do it. The U.S. Congress mechanic, which we should read about. <clears throat> the United States in the Thousand Week Reich makes use of a Congress mechanic similar, but not the same, as the one used in Man the Guns DLC. The Congress UI can be opened by clicking the Congress icon in the political overview screen, as shown in the image attached. Premier political power can be spent to increase political support in both House of Congress and both houses of Congress for 100 PP for 5% support. So look 5%, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Some focuses, events, and decisions, especially those relating to domestic policy, will require at least 50% support in both the House. Uh, House and Senate to enact. Occasionally, events will happen randomly that affect the amount of support, but it's likely some PP will have to be spent every now and then to keep the support above 50%. Additionally, if support in both the Houses of Congress is more than 50%, you will see if a powerful Congress majority modifier, which gives you pl plus 50% political power gain. Ooh, very cool. I like that. It's been a while since I played as the United States in, uh, in like vanilla Hoi 4, because I play like Kaiserreich and stuff, but it's been a while. Um, super heavy battleship? I like that. Uh, this is not a super heavy battleship, is it? It's probably not. No, if you're only level 2 stuff, that's just a normal battleship. I'm sorry, man. We're going to go carrier heavy and then super heavy battleships. So bye-bye. Uh, cruiser holes. Uh, how bad are these? I, I really have no idea. That's actually not too bad for heavy cruisers. That's actually not too bad. This is actually better. I'm still going to convert them to light cruisers, though. Because light cruisers are just so useful. They're, they're like the generic, for, at least for me, they're just like the generic screen that you can throw, throw en them on anything. They're just so good. I don't know anything about destroyers or frigates. Uh, let's see, their shields. I might use them eventually, but level two, eh. Corvettes, eh. Level one. I don't like seeing level one. I'm I'm a very simple guy when it comes to doing naval stuff. Uh, long range subs. Actually, we probably should not have gotten real stuff. But that's okay. Whatever. I don't really care. And you know what? Ooh, that has a higher number. I want to keep both of these for funsies. Actually, what's the range on this group? The range on this one is 4,000 kilometers, and that's not a bad sub at all, actually. And this one has 7,000. God dang, son. But you got like no tor you literally have no torpedoes. There'd be, there'd be a waste of time making you. All you do is just show up in the ocean and get shot at. That's not very cool in my mind. Uh, if that's the case, we're gonna make some subs then. We're gonna make quite a few subs because we do have the means of quite a large sub navy, which I'll put you in pa uh, Miami. I'm said Panama, but this is not Panama. It's Miami. Very cool. All right, let's look, take a quick look at the navy. It's actually well done already. So thank you, devs. I mean, you guys, someone knows what they're doing with the Navy. Someone definitely does. Now, we have no Sea Wolf. It's fine, whatever. Uh, I'll just put you under Fleet Attack when alongside the Pride of the Fleet. We don't have the Pride of the Fleet. Bold, I like that. Eh, that's kind of a waste. Chance to receive critical hits. Uh, air Controller, or Air Enthusiast. Aviation Enthusiast, I should say. This is Battleship Ardent. Just go with Felix Stomps to get more damage and speed. That's fine. Go ahead and start training. Uh, just train him, definitely. If, with America, you always just spend all your fuel as fast as you can to get as much naval XP. It's broken. The Yokomo attack, though, hours ago, an unauthorized plane, which appeared to be an old stolen Zero fighter, crashed into a U.S. patrol boat, killing 56 on board. Wow. A brief inter investigation by the National Police revealed that the attack was associated with a Japanese ultra-nationalistic group calling themselves K? Fukusuru. However, the National Police and Occupation Authority concludes that no such group exists. It's presumed that this is an attack concluded and planned by a single person. We've received an official apology from the Japanese government, but some critics are questioning the progress of re-education in occupied Japan. Oh, the humanity. Oh, terrible. But yeah, seriously, like, these task forces are not bad. Except this one should not have extra subs. Shouldn't have any subs in it. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, any subs here? No, I mean, 
These really aren't bad. I mean, maybe we could use just a few more screens here and there. Destroyers are okay screens. They're really not bad. I, I just prefer Black Cruisers because they can take a few more hits than uh, screens. Or... Black Cruisers. Sorry, my mind just went away. Uh, let's see. I don't like that. Death of Bornsian. Goodbye, old man. Capital ship attack. I'm going to go with... Let's see. Both have carriers, so it doesn't really matter. Which one has a part of the fleet? Does this one do? Ah, oh, this one does. This. Uh, wh wh which ship is a part of the fleet? USS U United States class carrier. So Egyptian martial law. Cool. Who is this? Is this USS United States? Makes sense, I guess. History, terrain, design. Really not bad. It's it's actually really really good. Wow. Thank you. So we'll go with this one. Yes, Arthur. Very good. Um. Cool. Uh, did I just choose Arthur for this? Did I? There you go. Okay, so then you have media personality. Now, iron side factor actually might be pretty good. Let's go with the whale. More naval speed and damage. Let's do that one. That's fine with me. Go ahead and train as well. And then you guys go and train as well. So, Tales from Europe. A disgraced formal British Prime Minister Churchill once said, an iron curtain now lies between the free world in the West and Nazi-dominated Europe. As a result, the European continent remains in large, a black part, a black hole, of which information about the daily lives of people and political events is often hard to gather. However, the walls are not airtight, and there is a constant trickle of European refugees escaping the fascist continent via the Channel, Scandinavia, and the Mediterranean, or through Russia and Central Asia. They bring har harrowing stories with them of a continent ruled by fear and brutality, from Eastern Europe in particular, and the Nazi Rex Commissariats and other colonies, Tales describe suffering and slaughter wrought on its people on a scale not seen since the days of the Mongols. It is clear that the victory of the German race over the inferior European races was not empty rhetoric from Hitler, as tens of millions deemed subhuman are butchered, bullied, beaten, starved, and enslaved across the continent. Those that escape the bullets fight and struggle for enough food to survive, with the authorities extracting grain for the German state and its brave settlers in the east to the detriment of the starving millions. Of course, with Germania making every effort to hide the reality of the situation, information is scattered and unclear. Yet even... Oh my goodness, we've got an election. Even... Uh, a kind of that was once the center of world civilization in Europe, uh, where the rights of man were first set out, now disregarding these rights and defining itself as a home of evil. Them, them nasty bastardinos will pay. Electioneers, of course. The presidential elections have been scheduled for November 4th, and each of the candidates running for the presidency have begun their campaigns and rallies across the country. MacArthur, General MacArthur, has previously stated his intent to run for the presidency with conservatives in the Republican Party divided between him and the isolationist Robert Taft, who seeks for America to back out of world affairs. While the two campaigns, anti-segregationist and progressive Earl Warren is using his justice ties and support to quickly gain traction up north. The Democratic Party has its fair share of divides, but with the highly controversial Dixocrat Strom Thurmond rallying, rallying his fellow supporters in the South against Northern candidates such as Estes Kefauver and Adla Stevenson. This election will by far shape America for years to come. An exciting time. Why do my boys turn out like this? Cool. Anyways, uh, so that's something we got to talk about. We have five candidates. We can choose, well, the 52 election. Establishment Republicans with the elephant and trumpets, I guess. We can smash the mafias, which I don't know anything about. Organized crime. That's kind of cool. We can smash them. Public housing. Strengthen American capitalism, which sounds very American. Traditional values and land of the free. We can go with moderate Democrats. And we can do increased federal funding, which looks pretty good, but infrastructure, it's not bad. I like that. Uh, consumer protections, which seems pretty good. Police reforming, or ref no, not police reforming, that's the hat there. Policing reform, basically the same thing. And progressive economics, and then for the people. But first, before we continue, let's go ahead and get another research going with Computing Machine in 34 days for plus 2% more research speed. Plus, muy bueno. So, we could also go back and choose Taft, and which become more isolationist, which I'll be honest, I, I'm not doing this campaign, no way. I'm. I don't want to be isolationist. We could have conservative education. We could go with Thurman Dixiecrats, which sounds extremely interesting in my mind, just because it's, he's an interesting dude. We'll put it like that. But And we can have enforced segregation. We can defend states' rights, which plus 0.5 political power a day. My goodness. I mean, you want states' rights? We get political power? Sure, why not? But we're not going to go down that this pathway. Pathway? Pathway. We're going to go down with MacArthur's presidency because, and the reason why, it's because I want to do no appeasement. I want to piss the Germans off so much. I want to get in a war with them. I want to go to war with them. We want to promote the American dream. We want to have home of the brave. We want the presidential mandate. And I think that'll be fun. I, I'm not choosing MacArthur for MacArthur. I'm just, I just want no, no appeasement. So that's really why we're going down that path. Now, that being said, we have the death of, the, of George VI. My words trip over themselves through my mouth. But anyways, um, I'll let you know right now. This is not... I plan on playing America in the Thousand Week Reich 
several different times. Because every time we play, it's a little bit different. Right now we have Truman. This In this campaign, we're going to go down with MacArthur. Later on, I do want to do uh, Thurman's, Dixiecrats, some other campaign. Probably not anytime soon. Oh, the German testing atomic bomb. That's not good. But you know what? American mods about to show itself to them Germans. And probably to the Brits, who are probably also developing nuclear power or nuclear weapons. So eventually, I will play as Thurman's Dixiecrats. I might even just play America five times. So we can get through moderate Democrats. So we can do Taft's Conservatives, which doesn't sound honestly that interesting, because isolationism, at least for a campaign, doesn't sound that interesting. But you never know. Pasi Kivi wins Finnish presidency. Okay, uh, cool. Social Democratic Party, the wise old man. And maybe eventually play as a establishment Republicans. But we might play a sixth time. Because, well, we might eventually have a coup to deal with. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We have a Powers Dictatorship, a Walker's Junta, a Lemnitzer's Government, Ridgeway's Leadership, and a Polish American Democracy. So, I really don't know that much at the time of this recording about um, the United States. I've not played them that much before. So, regardless, we do have UFO activists. Act activists and also... Uh, I'll talk about this in a little bit. So, midnight, pitch black sky, 50 miles from Roswell, 1952. The occasional Air Force security patrols aside, the ranches are quiet. Even livestock cannot hear the bear the cold of night, and certainly not the households scattered across the greenish brown landscape. Of course, it's March 6. It is a vast and unbroken field of silence, only interrupted by the occasional truck growl growling down the nearby interstate. But something is about to break that silence. A tiny car packed to the brim with tourists rides the deserted country roads with cameras at the ready and expectant gazes. Some of them use flashlights to illuminate the surrounding countryside, and tomorrow a farmer will lodge a formal complaint with the country or authorities. About the third time his wife was blinded by tourist flashlights this month, it will of course receive no response though. The tourists stop at a particular deserted overpass, leave the car's confines, and make their way towards a cordoned cordoned off spot on the ground. Torn synthetic fabric is scattered across the ground, along with the occasional frayed wire. If it had been whole, perhaps the tourists could have made out the half-weathered Air Force symbol on what used to be a weather balloon. They find what they're looking for, a half-embedded metallic object, so sleek and chromed, it looks literally otherworldly. The, the tourists coo and nudge at the object, and with small handheld implants, implants, they dig the object out of the ground and tuck it in a haversack. Tomorrow we will appear in a strange ex exhibition in Las Vegas, just six hours ahead of the Air Force's announcement of a missing data instrument. 52,000 visitors will be recorded before the object is retrieved, and a nation falls a little further into hysteria. Now, before we forget... Oh, I did not forget. We got that done. Um, we'll talk about this, the decisions, in just a little bit. Planes. I did actually not look at planes at all so far. Uh, let's see. Transport planes. Uh, those are cool. See you later. Uh, let's see. Fighters increased by 100. But then, let's see, interceptors. I don't use interceptors because they confuse me. I'll be honest, they, re they really do confuse me. So, uh, at the time of this recording, at least. Go ahead and do that. Oops, my bad. You know what? Put 100 on each one. That's fine. I could train them, but I don't really care. Uh, if I have to, if I train them, then we have to come back to these guys and then help them out, and I don't want to do that. Yeah, so we got some strat bombers, fighters, interceptors. Goodbye. 500. Go down to 400. Do that. And then split you in half. Do that, 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 that. Very good. Uh, let's see, strap bombers. You can, you can just hang out there for now. Actually, you can train then. It's fine. Uh, fighters. There you go. Fighters. There you go. Tactical bombers. One, two. Very nice. Good enough for now. Uh, let's let time go on as well. We don't want to just have time pause the entire time. Uh, usually I do this a little bit more efficiently, but right now I'm just kind of not. Let's see, fighters, 500 fighters, 500 interceptors, goodbye. Beat them bombers. If I should use interceptors, let me know. I mean, I don't really care about using them too much, but it is what it is. Minus 100, that's fine. Both of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there we go. There we go. Uh, you too, since you're not, you don't have anything on you guys. Uh, do that right there. Thank you. That's why I want to make some tactical bombers as well. Thank you. There you go. There, uh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Only four armies for now. Um, obviously, I'm going to be splitting things up even more and more and more, but that's fine. Whatever. Improved computing machine. There we go. It's going to take a little more than two months now to get 2% more research speed, but that's fine with me. That's totally fine. Uh, strap bombers, come on down here. Now to be fine. And then train. Cool. Heavy bombers, more strap bombers. Go and train. That's fine. Fighters, interceptors, goodbye. Light bombers. Ah, I love Cass. Cass is so destructive if you have air superiority. It's ridiculously strong. Uh, kept you guys on an app. That's fine. And put you guys. And there you go. One, two. I usually don't use this for Cass, but go ahead and do port strikes as well. And sometimes I do it. 
Fighters, plenty of fighters go one, two, there you go. This way we set ourselves up for the future and we don't have to deal with this later on. Ah, oh, we finished the hydrogen bomb. It's not a terrifying weapon if you're not the one receiving it, right? Exactly. Let's do the United States Air Force because that's the last the only thing we can do. So, as a foremost power of the Toronto Accord, it is imperative that we find a or have a military which is capable of facing a great variety of global challenges as well as defending the homeland from foreign invasion. Developing the armed forces will take a great deal of time and political capital, yes, but we have the Project Blue Bug. The room is sparse, self-contained, and compartmentalized. Most officers' rooms are an offshoot of their minds, packaged and crisp and utterly disciplined. The man sitting on his desk is also packaged, crisp, and utterly disciplined and bearing, but the scene around him is one of barely contained bed lambs. Papers, files, binders, books have been thrown around the room Poltergeist style, and notes are scattered like leaves in old forest across the various documents and pictures, noting dates, times, places. And Captain Edward J. Ruppelt, the man in question, is scribbling fiercely on a journal with the title, Aerial Appearances, Years 1947-51. to 51. Project Blue Book took over its predecessor and service as a branch of the Air Force a week ago, dedicated to studying and recording unidentified flying objects, UFOs. Already, Ruppelt has ideas brewing in his mind about how to best file the glut and post-war UFO sightings. Perhaps the computers that were the, the eggheads have running at the Bat Battelle Memorial Institute are a suitable substitute for malleable paper? In any case, the team's best inclinations are sharply divided between ideas about whether these appearances are coming from, and so it might be best to clear the heads and clear any members with too strongly held opinions out of the team. He has in his pocket a letter from the Chief of the Air Force, Hoyt S. Vandenberg, instructing him to take all necessary measures to consolidate the team's affairs, centralize available information, and present a report to him within a month, with emphasis on possible avenues for research into anti-air and surveillance technology. Ruppelt sighs. His subject matter is bizarre, but at least the mind-numbing American military bureaucracy is his close companion. Better the devil you know. At least we're keeping the tabs on these sightings. Caution! Cool. So, uh, let's, let's divide up the military a little bit more. We got, oh, more divisions here. Oh, that's pretty nice. Throw you right there, then. Well, I mean, you guys are in Japan, so we'll have that there. We have even more Marines. Throw you over here, then. Throw that, well, I don't want, I don't want to leave them over there for now. Keep the Marines together for now, sort of-ish. We got some paratroopers. Actually, how are they looking? Just seeing combat with, that's not bad. Yeah, that's not too bad. They have actually military police on them. That's interesting. Usually I don't see that. Uh, oh my god. Are, are these really our tanks? Cavalry? Where are you at? Yeah, I don't know about that, man. Infantry. There you go. Mm, put you under someone else. Put you under Eisenhower. That's fine for now. Uh, we actually do have a little bit of command power. Organization. Eh, we'll go with max planning. That's fine. And you should be led by probably the big man himself. If he's still around in 52, he might not be. Oh, no. Don't tell me Patton's gone. What happened to Patton? Polymer? Okay, he's gone. Okay. I'm not heartbroken. No, I'm not heartbroken at all. Not at all. No, not at all. Where are you guys even at? Um, I'm not really sure where to put you, so go against Mexico. And then maybe we'll go against Canada next. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Go ahead and train as well. Oh, we have, these are light tanks, too. Uh, 26 combat width. Oh, you got main... What the heck? What type of template is this? Oh, look, but let's talk about this in the meantime. So, we can launch nuclear strikes on Germany eventually. But that is going to take time. For us to nuke them, they we have to wait for them to nuke use nukes on us or anyone or any core territory of the main TA members or Toronto Accord members, us, uh, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. It is what it is. We've got prospects for resources, political action, for propaganda. We don't need to see those for now. We also have the Federal Reserve. It's a central banking system in the U.S. tasked with carrying out monetary policy on the national level to maintain a stable monetary system and alleviate financial problems. Chief among the Fed's tools is the control over the bank rate and therefore rates of interest, which is used to control inflation. Like all central banks, the Fed targets a low and steady interest rate in order to maintain a healthy economy. The interest rate is used to control inflation, which should be kept low, steady, and positive. A higher interest rate will lead to a reduction in inflation, while a lower interest rate leads to an increase in inflation. Aim to keep inflation between 0 and 5%. Deflation, which is negative inflation, and excessive inflation will both have negative effects on the economy. Various other actions may affect inflation rate. I could mess with it now, but honestly, 25 to 3%, that's not bad. And this is the best part about the United States so far that I've seen. Covert operations in Latin America. Being the guardian of the free democratic world, the U.S. Uh, has both a moral obligation and duty to enforce the ideas of democracy and freedom to its neighbors across the world. And Britain, of course, tests its own atomic bomb. Good for them. At least that's what the world is told. Perhaps more importantly, it is within America's strategic interest to ensure its power is secure in the Western Hemisphere, while it opposes more threatening powers elsewhere. While America's operations cover most of the world, those within Latin America are especially important due to its strategic value for the safety of the United States itself. Fascist and isolationist movements within the region, which seek to either to align towards the fascist powers or pursue fully independent foreign policy, must be kept in check in order for America to preserve its interests in the sphere. Lay the groundwork for oppos opposition. 
I'm sorry, man, but if I see that I can intervene in South American or Central American or Caribbean uh, affairs, I kind of have to go to Cuba in 52. I, 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 it feels too un-American if I didn't choose Cuba. And Death of Beria. Very cool. Uh, let's see you guys come over here. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to use paratroopers. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Uh, you probably get better, uh, what is this, recon? Oh, free French in France. Interesting. Command out of supply. Go ahead and choose them. Robert Sink, thank you. Uh, there's a little bit of lag. Ah, the GSN takes over. Y Jonas Lai and the GSSN have taken over to the regime. Quisling has been removed. Oh, this is in Norway. Okay. A more esoteric in Norway, as the GSSN's ideology closely re resembles that of their German counterparts. Oh, man. Okay, so they got rid of Quisling and chose someone even a little more radical. Okay, well, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Tor Southern tornado outbreak. In the past couple of days, there's there's been witness to one of the most deadly tornado outbreaks in the U.S. history. Violent tornadoes ravaged the southern United States, leaving nothing but destruction behind it. It is believed that over 200 people have been killed, and potentially up to 1,000 have been left injured. Tornadoes are merciless, and the ones that these ones were no exception. They have left pure devastation, which we only get one level of damage up to infrastructure in Arkansas. I mean, it's, it's oh, it's only one, but, you know, it's still people, you know. It's still people. Oh, Frederick Whalen, sure. This main army will be led by some dude, probably Bolt, and Mark Clark. Ah, uh, Walter Walker. Very cool. Very nice. Keep training, guys. Uh, let's let time go on. And, oh, I could affect this, but I'm not going to because we need to save our political power. Because, like I showed when I was playing it earlier you know, on my channel, uh, Germany, these companies, they all cost consumer goods. And uh, I kind of like the idea. I don't like losing consumer goods that each you know company requires consumer goods. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, Honeywell. Honeywell. Huh. Okay, there's some... What is going on? I can't... Hey, there's HP. Honeywell, we got more construction speed. That's not bad. For 5%, for 1%, that's not bad. So we're not going to choose that stuff. So here we are. Uh, we have the UN here. Open the UN screen. We're kind of waiting for things to happen, like China to maybe invade Vietnam. We, are, we will vote on stuff. Now, China... We... Like I said with Germany, I want to piss Germany off. I kind of want to piss China off too, because I want warfare. I want to go make it with MacArthur. I want to get involved. It's only 52, and America needs a little more conflict in her life. Ooh. Oh, information. Konev declared premier. Usually I see Zukov as premier, but okay. What does this say? Information created from the ashes. If you want to read that, go right ahead. Um, it's founded in New York City, held first established in 45. So... Most of the you know the German states aren't involved in here, so that's okay with us. Yes, yeah, so we got all this stuff. I want to do this because we might need to get some rubber eventually and make it ourselves. American synthetic rubber. I think that'd be a good thing to do. And that's why I'm building up all this stuff early on. Opening of the German Germania Metro. Very cool. Senators criticize policy, though. So debates rage here in the U.S. Senate as opposition senators fiercely attack the policies pursued by the current administration. Fiery speeches are heard throughout the long hours as even some of these senators in the same party as the president begin to persuade against the policies of their own administration. If we let it continue, it seems that these debates will negatively impact our support in the Senate, which could make it harder to pass legislation and enact policies in the future. We could attempt to hit it back, and instructing our loyal senators to defend the president's administration and denounce those who criticize him as not having the good of the country at the heart. But such a strategy could easily backfire if we are seen as too belligerent. So, if we want to talk about the Senate and the House of Representatives, we come to this little button up here, View the U.S. Congress, in which we are a Toronto Accord, which is nice. So, we have 45% in the Senate, and 45% in the House of Representatives. If we let them complain, we're going to lose support regardless. If we hit back, we lose some political power. And we might lose support in the Senate, but we might get some more support. So let's try hit back. And hopefully it doesn't hurt us too much. And we're looking at the Senate here, the top one. We got 5% more support. Not bad. Not bad. 50, 43 out of 96. Because Hawaii is not a state and neither is Alaska. Or at least they shouldn't be yet. So we talked about that. We talked about uh, the UN mechanic. We just need time to go on and watch what China does. And also, we own the Sakhalin Islands. Japan? Japan is a kind of a wild card. If you ever played TWR, Japan, I've seen several times go communist. I, or, you know, uh, a certain version of communism. I've seen them go an anarchist. Or anarcho. Anarchist. Egyptian Re Revolution in 52. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Now, Baratia is sometimes our puppet. Ooh, MacArthur's Rally. That's kind of cool. Cool. Uh, Baratia, we kind of probably can influence them quite a bit with Walt Willie... Willis Cronkite there, as well as these guys as well. 
Um, but we have MacArthur's rally. Following his announcement on his candidacy, General MacArthur has rallied supporters of Virginia, rallying against the oppressive policies of the German Reich in Europe and calling for America to double its efforts globally. MacArthur has always been a fierce supporter of interventionist policy and anti-isolationism. It is expected that with the rise of the Nazis in Europe, his views will be more widely shared with the American public who feel as if America must take up the position as the leader of the free world against the German oppression. <clears throat> the rally attracted a huge crowd, and it's safe to say that MacArthur will not be backing down anytime soon, especially against the more anti-interventionist voices in the party, such as Taft, who seeks for the restoration of isolationist policy. We'll see if the delegates agree with Mac's vision. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, comment debuts. May Day bloodbath in Japan. Shocking. And it's... Hopefully Japan remains normal and as our puppet, because they are literally under us for now. And that's a backwards Fili Philippines flag. At least that's what it looks like. Uh, they are literally our puppet, or... As a sponsored regime. Yes. Led by Yoshida Shigeru. China denounces, denounces Vietnam, which is good. Desai has been elected in India. Very good, very good. We have they have supply issues. They lose stability. Uh, we got a better computing machine. We have an they have an occupation policy. Uh, they have left wing agitation. They've got bitter defeat. Well, we kind of deserved it. Total military restriction. Well, what do you expect after doing bad things there? Let's get some decryption. Frequency analysis. Thank you. And we'll get some encryption as well. Polyalphabetical ciphers. Very nice. Let's go ahead and come back over here. And we can't do any of this stuff. We could get some resource extraction, which wouldn't be bad. Let's go and try that, you know. Because we're still missing rubber and a chromium. We'll work on that as time goes on. Infantry stuff. We probably want to do what? Land doctrine. Probably army interoperability. We're just going to go down this way because we already started this way. So we might as well, right? Very, very good. And let's see. Increase inflation, decrease in... Oh, Thurman in Louisiana. Thurman, an infamous Dixiecrat candidate for the presidency, has held a rally in Louisiana to further his campaign goals. Disliked outside of the Deep South, he is unlikely to get close to the presidency, but will be sure to take the South with him. Other Democrats have looked upon with caution at Thurman. If the Democratic nomination goes to him, the Democrats may fall to pull a win and the Republicans put up a candidate far more in touch with the people than Thurman is. Thurman's extreme pro-segregationist views will, for sure, and any hope for time, time for the African-American population to gain any rights on the national level in the near future. With a dictocrat in office, who knows what could happen? Will the South ever rest? Eh, maybe, maybe not. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> and I want to end this episode by doing something else, but you know what? We'll do it with the United States military. A generation ago, <clears throat> the U.S. was not a military superpower. On the eve of the wars in the 1940s, America had a powerful navy, but little else. Its land army and air force was relatively small compared to the world's other great powers. When Hitler overran Europe and brought Britain to heel, this began to change as President FDR could see the danger America was in. However, the strike on America would not come from Europe, but from the east, with Japan's surprise attack on U.S. naval forces at Pearl Harbor, kicking off the Pacific War. At that moment, the Goliath American economy was mobilized for war, and very soon the U.S. was producing more weapons and war materials than any other country on Earth, even as the Germans ground their way deeper into the Soviet Union. Systematically, and over a period of years, the Japanese war machine was completely defeated at sea in air and eventually on land with invasion and subsequent and eventual surrender of Japan. Yet America would not repeat the mistakes of the last major war was involved in after victory. America did not rest its laurels, confident in its safety. As Americans celebrated victory in Japan and freedom of uh, victory of freedom over tyranny and brutality, the Germans celebrated their opposite victory, that of evil over good. Europe lay enslaved, its resources and people used to fuel the Nazi war machine. While America did demobilize after 45, it did so, slowly and partially, and to this day, its military strength, accounting for all branches of the military and military industrial power, as arguably the strongest in the world, with Britain weak, America now stands as a torchbearer and guardian of democracy, and its armed forces on land, air, and sea, its weapons against tyranny. Defenders of freedom, one day we'll fight again. And we shall end this episode choosing one of these three focuses, because that's all we can do. Uh, yeah. So we can either do the Army, the U.S. Air Force, or the Navy. I'm going to do the Navy just so that we can get over here and we can get a total of four more naval dockyards because it's it's easier to produce equipment usually for the Army. It's difficult to get enough ships out in the sea and I want to be proactive about that. So the U.S. Navy. Every great power is backed by an equally great Navy or at least they ought to be. In order to fight the Germans, our naval forces must be the apex of their effectiveness. But unfortunately, that's all the time for that we have today, my friends. I hope you enjoyed today's first episode. We only got to May 20th, but that's okay if you liked it. If you liked the video, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see y'all tomorrow after I just realized the UK owns two pieces of Guyana. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.